Sharing their love for music, Richard Patron Jr. and Danielle Ottoba danced to a live band song at a bar, not knowing this would be the last time the world would see them together. Someone out there was planning to end this relationship. Oblivious to the fact that they were being watched, Danielle and Richard left the bar at 11.45 p.m., never to be seen again. 20 years later, the questions remain, where are they? Almost two decades later, the families of the victims still ask this question. What happened to Danielle and Patron Jr.? Before we dig deeper into this case, let's see what the two were doing that night before going missing. On a lonely night, in February 2005, a man wearing a grey hoodie, jeans and sneakers was sitting in a South Philly bar. His appearance depicted his lack of effort in wanting to look presentable to the world. The man dialed a number on his phone and walked toward a woman on the other end. Picking up his car keys, the man stood up and left the bar in a silver Dodge Dakota truck. This man is Richard Patron Jr. on his way to another bar where his sister Christine and mother are partying with Danielle and her mother, Felice Ottoba. His night was not lonely anymore. Why is Danielle partying with Richard's sister, you may ask? Christine and Danielle are high school buddies and their mothers made a friendship of their own. Things were a bit rough in Danielle's life that night. She had ended her marriage after a long separation and rejected Richard's advances for a serious relationship with her, telling him that she only wanted to focus on her child for the time being. Despite being incredibly in love, Richard understood, but tonight, things were about to take a turn when the two met yet again. Even though they were meeting after a breakup, things seemed to go smoothly for the couple that night. They were talking, sitting close together, laughing and kissing, then Danielle told him about her Sunday plans that her ex-husband was scheduled to drop off her son at her place. She mentioned her hair appointment. Richard, on the other hand, told her his plans for the weekend. Being a NASCAR fan, Richard was all set to watch Daytona 500 with his friends. They were comparing their schedules as if to set another date together. That night, the two left the bar around 11.45 together. Richard offered to drop Danielle at Mount Laurel at her place and then he would return to his home in South Philly. She accepted the offer with a beautiful smile. This night was memorable for her and would be for everyone else in the room for years to come. The FBI says two individuals in a truck cannot disappear without a trace. Either this was an accident or a murder very well executed. But who committed a crime so grotesque yet so well planned? Was it a hire for murder? Was it an ex-husband's revenge? At this point, no one is ruled out of the suspect's list, says the FBI agent Vito Roselli. The next morning, Danielle missed her much-awaited hair appointment but it was not until several hours later that their family started to worry about their absence. Both their cell phones went straight to voicemail. John Ottaba, Danielle's brother, decided to check his sister's house. He went into the house and found the place intact. It appeared as if Danielle had not come back home after spending the night with Richard. On the other side, Richard had missed his plans of watching the Daytona 500 with his friends. His daughter, Angela, who was 14 at the time, grew increasingly concerned. Panic did not hit the Ottawa family until little Joe Jr. was scheduled to return home to his mother at 3 p.m. No way Danielle would have missed that, said John Ottawa in an interview with their news channel. Danielle's ex-husband Joe Imbo arrived with their son at 3 p.m., surprised to not find Danielle at the door waiting to hug her son. Joe asked John if everything is all right. John was too hopeful to deem his sister missing yet. He covered for Danielle, saying that she was out to run some errands and told the family to attend her son. Joe Imbo did not ask many questions and left her home that afternoon. The two families began frantically calling each other trying to locate their loved ones. They were unable to get help from the authorities since it had not yet been 48 hours, which is the minimum time before an adult is legally declared missing. John Otterburn and Richard Peterson Jr. decided to take matters into their own hands. Before 24 hours passed by, John and Richard's father set out in John's car to trace and retrace every location of major highways from Philly to Mount Laurel slowly driving from the dark streets of the city all night. John and Richard returned to home at dawn, extremely tired. That day, Richard and Daniel's friends and some volunteers formed groups to begin a grid search. Each group fanned out 100 miles in every direction from the bar. John Otterburn even paid $1,200 to a Camden police officer so that he would take them in a helicopter ride around the city. Both John and the group's volunteers searched for a trace. Despite their best efforts, neither John nor the volunteer groups were able to find any clues. 
However, the Camden police officer had shocking news for John. No one is ever going to be able to find anything, it's all too clean, said the police officer as he shattered John's hopes of finding his sister again. It all began to seem like murder. The question arises, who was the intended target? Was it a jealous husband's revenge? In law enforcement circles, a saying goes, it's always the ex-husband, no matter how many possibilities this case entails. One suspicion unites the victim's family and the FBI. Joe Imbo might be the one directly or indirectly involved in the murder of his ex-wife and her boyfriend Richard. The FBI has not ruled out any possibilities even after 19 years. Vito Roselli, who has even been involved in the case since day one, firmly believes it was an assassination. In an interview with ABC7, Roselli says, I am confident that it was a murder, that there was foul play. In another mysterious statement, Roselli tells the reporter that people knew who did it. Not emphasizing who these people were, Roselli leaves the world hanging. If we take Vito Roselli's words for it, we need to consider the fact that most murders happen due to some underlying cause, and in this case, Danielle's ex-husband might have a strong desire for revenge. Joe Imbo and Danielle Otterber met while Danielle was working in car sales. Joe reached down to her after Danielle helped him pick a new car because Joe's old car clunker broke down. Almost immediately, the two of them hit it off and some years later, Danielle and Joe were a happily married couple. However, Joe fell out of love as quickly as he fell into it. In 2004, he went to watch Super Bowl with friends, leaving behind his sick infant and wife. And when Joe came back, he had a shocking announcement for Danielle that would change the course of her life forever. He told Danielle that he had met someone else on the plane to New Orleans. Without further explanation, Joe filed for divorce and moved to Georgia with his new love affair. Unsurprisingly, the relationship didn't last long, and Joe came back to Danielle, begging her to consider reconciliation. But this time, Danielle had become comfortable in her life without Joe. After months of grieving, extreme weight loss, and chain smoking, Danielle had learned to accept her new reality. She'd also started dating her childhood friend, Richard. However, making it extremely clear that she's not looking for anything serious and her only priority is raising her child as a single mother for the time being. While Richard was okay with only seeing Danielle for some time, Joe grew infuriated at Danielle's newfound confidence. Allegedly, Danielle told her brother that Joe threw the baby's high chair on the wall during their argument over divorce. John had to sit him down and ask him to be more civilized, however. Joe refused to accept what he had done. And if his fits of anger were not enough, Joe hit a new low by accessing Danielle's voicemail and going through every contact that ever called his ex-wife. Later, when asked why he did that, Joe would call it jealousy and nothing else. In an interview with Philadelphia Magazine, Joe admitted that FBI agent Vito Roselli has shown suspicion toward him. I don't think you did this, but I think you were involved in some way. To this day, Roselli has not ruled out Joe as a suspect. However, Joe had a strong alibi on the night when Danielle and Richard Jr. went missing. But here is something suspicious. Joe was having dinner with his cop friends and all of them were the higher-ups in the Philadelphia Police Department. So was it a coincidence or a recipe for a perfect crime? Guess we might never know. A few weeks earlier, an organization aiming to find missing people, Adventures with Purpose, set out to find Danielle and Richard Patron Jr. With the possibility in mind that their disappearance was an accident, the team sets out to search the Delaware River, which is located between the route that Richard might have taken to drop Danielle. Using sonar technology, the team found drowned car parts deep in the river. However, none of them belonged to the Black Dodge Dakota that Richard owned. Despite their best efforts, the search continues to this day. No one knows what happened to the couple. Maybe it was a really perfect crime and not an accident, and the criminal got really lucky. Richard's family has assumed him dead and found peace as they mourned for him. But on the other hand, Danielle's family is still hopeful that their daughter will show up to the door one day smiling like she used to and filling the air with her contagious happiness.